Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to help you get the Nest Audio set up in your home. We're going to start inside of the Google Home application and when you open it up, what you should see is the words set up Nest Audio at the top. If you have your device plugged in, it's gone through its little boot up process, you'll hear a little bit of an audio sound there when it boots up and you should see it at the top. But if you don't, you can actually just hit the plus button at the top and hit set up device and then set up new devices in your home. Now, at that point, it will ask you if you haven't set up a home or created a home in the Google Home application, well, you're going to need to add one. Now, what it's doing is looking for devices, and what's important here is that you're close to the device, you have Bluetooth on on your smartphone, and it will try and make that quick connection or at least discover the device. So it's briefly connected to this device using Wi-Fi on your phone and Bluetooth. Now, Nest Audio was found, so I can go ahead and continue the setup process. So you can see now it's doing a full connection to this device using the Google Home application, and that's why you're gonna need both of those technologies turned on. So you'll get that little sound that plays out of there when it makes a connection. And if you never get to that point, I tell you, you could have some interference between these two devices, big Wi-Fi signals around you. Maybe your table is metal or something like that and it's reflecting signals. So just think about those kinds of things. You can see I'm using a basic wooden table. I'm fairly close to the device and it's easily connected to it. So yes, I did hear that sound and I'm moving forward in the process. Now, if you wanna help improve Nest Audio, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit no thanks because it's just basically taking statistics and crash results if your device ever crashes, but I don't need to do that with every speaker and I have a lot of speakers. Now, you can choose the different rooms that you have here or you can create a new room and there's even the ability to add a custom room if you're not finding the name that you would like of the room. Now, when I select one and then hit next, I'm given the opportunity to actually name this device. For this one, I'm just gonna call it the Nest Audio because it's the first one in my home and I'm not too sure where I'm placing it in the end. So I've hit next and now I have to go through the Wi-Fi connection setup process and you will have to have your credentials for Wi-Fi for your Wi-Fi in your home and then you're going to be able to do this connection process. So once I've selected mine, I hit next and now it's trying to connect it to the Wi-Fi. Now for you, you probably just had to put in the Wi-Fi password for your system. I have already done that on a number of devices and I've actually saved it and that's an option you'll get here if you haven't already done that. Now it's made that connection successfully. Again, if you're struggling a little bit, it might make sense to move this a little closer to your router or your Wi-Fi access point for that initial setup. The other tip I can give you with that is if your router is kind of full of the number of devices, that can often happen at around 20 to 30 devices with some of those routers from ISPs, internet service providers well, then you might wanna just turn a few of those off in order to make that initial connection. Might also signify to you that your Wi-Fi system's getting a little bit overloaded. The next component of this is actually setting up the Google Assistant. So I'll hit next on this, but you might wanna do some reading there. It's talking about privacy and how your data is being managed and things like guests. I'm getting a question here whether I want to change my assistant language to English Canada because I'm actually up in Canada, but I'm going to leave it as English US. This sometimes gets you some extra features here. So that's just a little trick for you if you're in an English speaking country. Well, you might want to use English US. Now, activating voice match. This is definitely something I recommend everyone does. This allows you to get personalized results. Now you have to agree to it a second time, but what it will ask you to do is maybe speak a couple of wake words into the whole system here. And then what it's gonna do is create a voice record for you and place it on this device. Now, getting personal results with your voice is the result of that. You can get things like calendars and contacts, reminders, and it'll even start to personalize music over time, connect to your music services. So I'm going to agree to personal results because it's very useful. 
The default music service is just basically if you ever ask to play music and you don't say which service you're wanting to use, well, that's the service it will use. Now, YouTube Music and Spotify both have free options and YouTube Music is going to use the Google account that you've already connected here. So whatever Google account you're in, if you have YouTube Music Premium on that, that becomes a really great service. But the ad supported services from YouTube and Spotify, they're pretty good. They're not perfect. You're going to find some differences, but you go ahead and you select which one of those you'd like and then you hit next. Now, you can also add in Sirius XM radio if you have that in many countries. I don't, so I'm not going to hit the plus there, but it's just logging in with the credentials there. Getting started with voice calls. Now, this can make phone calls, period, but you can also make Google Duo voice calls and Google Duo is a really useful service. Plus, when you get it on a phone, you can make video calls and now share your screen. So really useful stuff. But what you're going to have to do is download the Google Duo application. I've already set all that up, so I won't show you that whole process today here, but you basically download Google Duo connect it to your phone number and you get a text that allows you to do that through the setup process. Very simple stuff. So once you've done that, you're ready and you're actually finished the basic setup. Google's going to tell you about the controls on the Nest Audio. So this is the play and pause button right up at the top. There's no physical button there. And then you have the volume up and down buttons that you can go ahead and adjust. Now, factory reset on this, I'll leave a link down below to how you do that with this device. It's a little bit different. And then there is the microphone mute on the back. Your Google Assistant, I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. So now we're all done with the basic setup. They're giving you some little options and you're ready to go with this speaker. But I've got more for you because there's a whole set of settings that you have to understand. Now, I found it in the Google Home application. I had to scroll down to that room and I can actually physically tap on the Nest Audio. Now, there's the quick ability to manage the volume on this device. It comes up very quickly now. And if I was playing audio on my phone, I could hit the cast my audio and it would mirror directly to this device. There's also an equalizer up at the top of the screen and the equalizer allows you to fine tune your bass and your treble settings a little bit with this Nest Audio. There's also a larger device settings things and you can see the linked accounts up at the top. You can tap into there and see those and you've got to switch over to those accounts in order to unlink devices from the account in general. Alarms and timers right now is a very basic interface but this allows you to set the volume for alarms and timers out of this separately from the overall device volume. You can adjust the name of your Nest Audio device and you can adjust the home as well as the room it's in today. Next up are groups. Now groups are really interesting because if you ask the Google Assistant to play music on a specific group, so if I said on gym group and I've selected to add it to that, well now I have this device in that group and it will play in conjunction with the other speakers in that group. Now you can also create a whole new device group if you'd like, save that and add the different speakers you have throughout your home into that group. The ability to manage the Wi-Fi is right here and you can hit that forget button over there and you basically end up resetting up the device. Now, digital well-being is a really interesting feature and it focuses on both filtering the content, the type of content that's available, and then on top of that, it also gives you some downtime. Now, the ability to filter content for everyone or supervised accounts and guests depends on whether or not you've kind of used uh, Family Link, which is another application by Google. And I'm not going to go through all of that, but you can use just the supervised accounts, which are basically child accounts, to turn on filters on this device. And then otherwise, you're going to be able to play whatever you want on it. Now, you can select the different devices. If you wanted to add more of your speakers in, you can do that right now. But you can see I only have the Nest Audio selected and I'm going to hit next. The first thing we can filter is video. So we can only allow filtered videos or we could block all videos. Now, this is a speaker, but 
What you can do later is you can actually cast to Chromecast devices, and that would mean that anybody making a request through this speaker wouldn't be able to play explicit videos. And the same thing goes for music. Now that one's really pertinent to a speaker like this because you're going to play a lot of music. The next control that you have is the additional controls here on calls. Now, you have the ability to allow or block calls and to restrict the ability to actually answer if you'd like. Now, the other one down at the bottom is based on what are called assistant actions. And these are basically little applets or little apps that you can use in conjunction with the Google Assistant. So you can turn on the only allow family friendly ones and then nobody is going to be able to access anything that they shouldn't. So filters are now on and next up is downtime. Now you are basically scheduling a time when this is not going to respond and or respond and it actually responds pretty loudly in some cases. So I'll show you how to manage that as well. But you'll block all responses, block music and videos, but alarms and timers will still work on this. So that's a nice little piece there. The ability to select devices is happening again, so I could select other devices. You can see I've got schedules for downtime on other devices, and you can choose the day. So if this is going in a kid's room, well, school nights kind of make sense to schedule that for. You're able to tap on any of these controls and then schedule what time you'd like it to go into downtime mode and what time that downtime mode ends. Once we hit next, we're finished and we've set up both of those. Now, if you don't want those settings anymore, you can actually tap back in and turn off the downtime. I don't want this one to be on downtime because this is gonna be a music playing experience for me. Next up is accessibility. And when you request the Google Assistant to wake up, you might want a start or an end sound to kind of signify that it's heard you. And I find that really useful with the Google Assistant. The next thing is the preview program. And what you're going to do is say whether or not you'd like to join that program. If you join it, then what happens is you'll get some new features, but they might not work perfectly. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Night mode is one of the ways that you can really reduce that volume and I like this feature because it allows you to at a certain time period on certain days adjust the LED brightness make that kind of the maximum and then the maximum volume in those evenings as well and you can turn on do not disturb so you're not going to get things like calls in the middle of the evening. You can lower the volume when listening. So when the Google Assistant hears you, this is kind of helpful, especially with a really powerful speaker. And then you can let others control your cast media. So this basically allows other people connected to your Wi-Fi to adjust what's playing on the speaker. It's kind of a good thing. Pairing a Bluetooth device, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. In the bottom right, you'll hit the enable pairing mode and this will activate the speaker's pairing mode. Now in your phone, you will have to go to the Bluetooth settings on your device and pair a new device. Next up, you'll find the Nest Audio speaker, which in this case is called Nest Audio because that's my name, and then hit the pair button and you'll have the full connection already done. Now any music playing on your phone is going to play on the speaker. A couple of defaults that you can set are really helpful. So say you didn't want to use this as the music speaker, you wanted to pair with another Bluetooth speaker, you saw how to do that, but you could also set a default as say that gym group. So anytime I ask for this to play music, it's going to play on that whole gym group setup that I had if I've selected it that way. Same with the default TV. So there's a lot of ability to cast a lot of different content and you can select the default TV. So you don't have to say, oh, can you play this on the Den TV? It will just automatically play on that Den TV. There's your equalizer again and the ability to redo your personal results or your voice match. You can retrain the voice model if it's not quite working for you there. You also have the ability to adjust the sensitivity on the wake word. So this is less sensitive and it will hear you less times and maybe eliminate some of those false positives. And this is more sensitive if it's not hearing you uh, every time. If you want to turn off reminders on this device and other notifications, you can actually turn that off right there. And then you have the ability to 
to restrict YouTube entirely, different content entirely. You don't have to just use the filter. It can be for everyone and basically everything. If you didn't set up duo calling, you have the ability to do that right there. And this is called group delay. And if you have a number of speakers working in a group, you might find that you need to delay the audio on this speaker versus some of those other ones. Maybe they're a little bit slower in terms of their response and playing music that is being streamed to them. So you can actually turn that up and down if you're finding a little bit of an echo in your groups. If you want to redo that whole setting around sending crash reports, go ahead and do that right there. The removing of voice match is a quick tap and the removing of the device from your home is a quick tap at well as well. That's not a factory reset though. It just removes it from your home. And at the bottom, you have information on the software version and the cast firmware version. Those tend to be very important actually as you go forward. You wanna know what kind of version you're on and whether you should have access to certain features. So there you go, the Nest Audio is completely set up, but you're gonna need to know about the new features that you can use on a device like this. So that's the playlist that's up on screen. It will teach you all about the Google Assistant and Google Home. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and of course, don't hate, automate.